Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue on our study of Hosea. Last week, we talked about God's impending judgment on the people of Israel because of their wayward ways. They were worshiping Baal. They were dealing with uh, worship of, of Baal and uh, temple prostitution and personal prostitution, and God was going to bring his wrath upon them. In the fifth chapter, we read about God's dealing with the people of Israel and his judgment upon him. And today we get into the sixth chapter, and in that sixth chapter, we get the feeling that we're eavesdropping on a conversation between individual Israelites. So let's begin then in the first verse of the sixth chapter. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces. So without repent, repentance, judgment looms. But he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind us and he will bind up our wounds. So true repentance uh, was something that the Israelites were reluctant to deal with. They would play act. They would, they would make sacrifices, but they wouldn't follow through with faithfulness. And without faithful following of God, a judgment was imminent. In verse 2, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us. Uh, I don't know if this is literal or not. Uh, probably not. It is indicative of a short period of time. But some New Testament writers uh, believe, uh, and I would concur, that, that the three-day reference uh, is an illustration or a reference to the resurrection of Christ. And we see in the New Testament where Old Testament writings were, were referred to, and this is one of them, I believe. And verse 3, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him, or let us strive to acknowledge Him. And this is the only place in the Old Testament where that phraseology is, is uh, used. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rain. So this is not wishful thinking on the part of the people of Israel. This is an absolute certainty. As, as, as the sun arises, as the sun appears, as dew falls on the ground as the sun rises it it will occur this is not wishful thinking this is a certainty he will come to us like the winter rains like the spring rains that water the earth so here in this next verse in the in the fourth verse we see god's frustration uh, come to the surface uh, what does it take to turn their hearts, he is saying. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Uh, we have seen a similar illustration in the New Testament with the parable of the seeds, that some seed falls on the ground and doesn't grow, doesn't materialize, doesn't produce. And this is what God is saying here. Your love is like the morning mist. It just quickly disappears. You don't follow me. You acknowledge me. You claim to be faithful and you sacrifice, but uh, it's temporary. It, it goes away quickly. And then verse 5, therefore, so based on what I've said before, therefore, we're having a change. We're having a result now of what God has said. 
Therefore I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. My judgments flashed like lightning upon you. So God is saying, because of, of your unfaithfulness, because of your Baal worship, because of your prostitution, because of your idol worship, I will cut you to pieces with my prophets. My judgments flashed like lightning upon you. And what do you expect, Israel? I've warned you before. I've done everything that I can in terms of forewarning you about the upcoming judgments, yet you have remained unfaithful. You have perhaps shown your love through a sacrifice, but a sacrifice without faithfulness is worthless. For I desire mercy, God says, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Uh, they used sacrifices to try to manipulate God. They, they tried to show uh, themselves by regularly going to the, to the temple or to the synagogue by offering sacrifices, but that was all there was to it. It was kind of check the box. Well, we made this sacrifice, now we're good. Well, no, you're not. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Verse 7 reads, Like Adam, they have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. Now, this is very interesting because Scripture does not record any covenant with Adam. Uh, there is a place on the Jordan River uh, named Adam, and it could be that this is what uh, Hosea is referring to because it says, they were unfaithful to me there, indicating a place. There is also a, or was at that time, a small town uh, in that area around the Jordan. Verse 8 Gilead is a city of wicked men, stained with footprints of blood. Uh, there is no specific instance that is alluded to in this, in this verse. We don't know exactly where that comes from, the footprints uh, in the blood. Uh, we just don't know. As marauders lie in ambush for man, so do bands of priests. So the spiritual leaders of the community were just as guilty of bloodshed and of uh, false worship as uh, the people were. They murder on the road to Shechem, committing shameful crimes. And again, a specific event is not alluded to, so we don't know if this was a recent occurrence or if this was something that occurred in the past, but it is not, it is not referred. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel, that being the utter depravity, the prostitution. There Ephraim is given to prostitution and Israel is defiled. So, so this is a, a, an affront to God. This is this hurts him deeply, and, and he is lashing out in the forms of his wrath and, and punishment. And Israel just doesn't pay attention. There Ephraim is given to prostitution, and Israel is defiled. So God is, is referencing Israel. But in verse 11, he says, Also for you, Judah, a harvest is appointed. So Judah is heading down the wrong path just as Israel has. Whenever I would restore the fortunes of my people, whenever I would heal, heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim were exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. So without discipline, without discipline, 
a rebellion continues, we have to be in our faith disciplined by our faith. Uh, James says, without works your faith is nothing. God is saying here through, through Hosea that without faithfulness, without obedience, your sacrifices mean nothing. Uh, going to church, even tithing to church, um, means nothing without faithfulness, without working to build and grow the church. And that's what God is saying to the people of Israel and is saying to us. And he names three uh, sins, three accusations against Israel. They practice deceit. Thieves break into houses. Bandits rob in the streets. But they do not realize that I remember all their evil deeds. We go out at night thinking we can fool God by being in the dark. We try to hide our sins, but God knows. God sees all, and he says, I remember their evil deeds. Their sins engulf them. They are always before me. Without our faith in Jesus Christ, without our repentance, our turning away from these sins, God remembers. And I just pray, brothers, that the lesson of, of this uh, part of Hosea will remind us of our need to be faithful, to be obedient to what God calls us to do and how he calls us to act and be. Let us pray together. Now, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you for the words that are recorded in Scripture. And we pray, Father, that, that they will uh, instruct us and guide us and that we will be obedient. Now, Father, we pray for those that are on mission trips, that are helping folks in Ukraine and in Florida, in Mayfield. Uh, Father, we uh, pray for those in eastern Kentucky that are still dealing with uh, the devastating floods. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine that, that still suffer daily the ravages of war. We pray, Father, for those that are hospitalized, that are facing surgery, that are in recovery. We Pray, Father, your healing touch upon them and your presence with the doctors and nurses. And Father, most of all, we pray that, that we would ingest your words, that we would not only hear them, but we would absorb them and respond appropriately to them. Father, we thank you and pray that you would be with us, guide us and direct us, we pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.